And what have you? What have they done to them? They have imposed an excess duty on human hair, wigs, false beards, eyebrows, eyelashes, artificial nails. Yes, speaker, these, these people have a bone to pick with poor Kenyans. They don't want our women to be beautiful. They don't want our men to be well kept. Mr. Speaker, they are basically strangulating every other poor Kenyan who is struggling. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, those saloons, those kinyozis employ hundreds of, and, of thousands of Kenyans. A, hundreds of thousands of Kenyans are employed and depend on those kinyozis, those saloons. If you come out and impose such taxes, you are essentially telling them to go back to and engage in other nefarious activities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you cannot be on one hand condemning alcoholism and drugs and so on and so forth. And on the other hand, you are removing people from gainful employment and throwing them to the wilderness. What a contradiction is that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this bill, this bill, as I conclude, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, as we sit here today, and as we debate in this very magnificent chamber, Kenyans are watching out there. In fact, I have received since one hour ago, not less than 200 messages from Kenyans who are watching us, who are watching us. It is therefore incumbent upon us to choose where we want to stand. Do we want to stand on the right side of history or on the wrong side of history as a house. Because Kenyans are watching. Do you want to side with the oppressors who have brought this bill? Or do you want to stand with the poor Kenyans? The choice is ours. At the end of the day, it will be neither the issue of Kenya Kwanza or Azimio. It will be the issue of what position did a leader take at the hour of need. What stand did you take at the hour of need for Kenyans? They are watching, and it will not matter whether you vote yes or no, and whether we, yes wins or not. What will matter is where are you standing as a leader of the people of Kenya. The speaker, in this country, we, have, we, are used to, we are used to giving empty and lofty promises, and then we forget about them soon after elections. This time around, the mood I am seeing out there, and I am very often at home, Mr. Speaker, the mood out there is that this bill is a make or break point. This bill, this bill can actually spark a serious revolution in this country. This bill, I, can, I, I, want, to, I want to caution you, this bill can actually be the spark that will lead a revolution that will never be ended. And it's going to be a revolution of the proletariat, Mr. Speaker. It's going to be a revolution led by the poor hustlers, Mr. Speaker. Because they have had enough. They have had enough of lies. They have had enough of this chest stamping. They have had enough of this bravado. That hour of reckoning has now come. And therefore, I want to say this. I want to say this. That even as we stand here to please our masters out there, our masters who are watching us, yes. you must understand that the bigger, greater masters are the people who voted us, not those who imposed us on these positions. Yes. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this house cannot go down in history as a house which disregarded the plight of the people. This house must go down in history as a house which stood with the people at their hour of need. And with those very many Mr. Speaker, I oppose in totality. Thank you. Then the Nyoro. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for a chance to contribute in regards to the finance bill. And of course, I rise to support. And Mr. Speaker, 
I would want to take this opportunity to contextualize the debate you are having and the ramifications of this debate. Mr. Speaker, we just debated our estimates, which we concluded.